Good afternoon, class. Uh, it's it's uh, Dr. Cradle here. Now we're going to do a quick review and as we pick up with basic airway adjuncts. Um, we talked yesterday mostly and it came down to the three functions of, uh, of getting air in and out. You have ventilation, respiration, and oxygenation. Ventilation, as you remember from yesterday, is the getting the actual air into the uh, lungs uh, from the outside and getting it in. Respiration is what? Is the gas exchange going on in the alveoli and down the tissues. And oxygenation is actually the unloading of oxygen and getting it to the cells themselves. Today we're going to pick up with um, the basic airway ad adjuncts. This prevents the obstruction uh, by the tongue and allows for passage of air and uh, oxygen into the lungs. Let's start from an OPA, an oral pharyngeal airway looks like this. You'll see different things like this. This is a, a large one. You can always go, you can go down to something about this size. On OPA, you can see your skills drills for 9-3 uh, and 9-4. It keeps the tongue from blocking the upper airway. Makes it uh, easier for suctioning the oral pharynx if it's necessary. Indications. For this is for an unresponsive patient without a gag reflex. The tip down here, when you put this in somebody's mouth, and uh, turn it like it's supposed to be. If they have a gag reflex, they're going to puke on you. So this is somebody who has an absence of a gag reflex. It's used on an apneic patient being ventilated with a bag valve mask device. And you'll see that bag valve mask. You want to make sure that when you're using one of these, that you have one of these in place. Contraindications uh, for using an OPA is uh, a conscious patient. You would not want to stick that in somebody's throat. Uh, it might make them gag, and you get puke done. Any patient who has an intact gag reflex, my rule of thumb is if you puke on me, you hit me from my waist down, you're fine. You hit me from my waist up, I will might be joining you in puking. So please do not use an oral pharyngeal airway in somebody who is alert because you will have a gag in, in a puke party. Uh, the videos were not working last night to see if it's working today. Nope. So we we'll go to nasopharyngeal airway. An, uh, an NPA, nasopharyngeal airway, is this right here. It sticks down somebody's nose in their nair. Um, let me see the bevel side there. We use it and we start in their nose. This is used with a patient who is unresponsive or who has an ultra-level consciousness. They have a gag reflex. So if that gag reflex is, is in place, we can use this airway and it can maintain the open airway for them. Or if this patient is unable to maintain his or her own uh, airway spontaneously. If you want to review this, you can look at your skills drill 9.5. Indications are going to be somebody who is semi-conscious or unconscious patient with an intact gag reflex. Or a patient who will not tolerate an oral pharyngeal airway. Some of them do not want to have that thing in their mouth. There are some contraindications. Severe head injury with blood in the nose. Or history of fractured uh, nasal bones. Why do you think that they would not want to have used this airway in somebody's nose if they have history of fractured nasal bones? Could that be a problem? Is the... Uh, the facial structure or the or nasal structures in place like they're supposed to be to actually get it to pass like it's supposed to. We don't know. So if somebody has a history of fractures of the face, you might not want to use your nasal um, airway. Here the video is not working. Suctioning. You, uh, you can keep airway clean to ventilate properly by using suction. You have portable, hand-operated, and fixed equipment uh, is essential for resuscitation. This, is, this you'll find in your trucks. This one here. This one is a portable suction that we will carry, and you'll see, uh, hopefully, when um, Chief uh, Barber can work with you guys on your airway, uh, or your new instructor when, uh, when she's hired and brought in. I will show you guys some videos, but um, I'm not going to be able to be there to check you off. And this is a, a hand pump that you can be used. You have portable or fixed units uh, should have a, uh, a wide bore, thick walled, non kinking tubing. Why do you not want it to kink? If the tubing kinks, it'll be just like that uh, when you do a water hose and you're messing with your younger brother or sister or even your older brother or sister, and water's coming out and you kink it off. You look into it and you open it up and it splats them in the face with water. Well, same thing can happen. We want to use a non-kinking tube because when we're suctioning somebody's airway out, we want to make sure we're getting it out, whether it be blood or mucus or whatever it is. You want to make sure we're getting it out and not just leave it there. It's going to be a plastic, rigid uh, pharyngeal suction tip. Uh, I'll show you some pictures of those uh, next time. I thought I had one over here, but it's not over here right now. Uh, a non-breakable disposable collection uh, bottle. 
and a water supply for rinsing the tips. Techniques of suctioning. Inspect the equipment regularly to operate the suction unit. Check the unit for proper symbol, uh, assembly of all of its parts. Test the suction unit to ensure that the vacuum uh, pressure is more than 300 millimeters of mercury. Select, uh, select and attach the appropriate suction catheter to tubing. Never suction the mouth or nose for more than 15 seconds at one time for the adult patient, 10 seconds for children, or 5 seconds for infants. Suction can and will lead to hypoxia, and so please review your skills dry, uh, drill 9-6. And here again, I'll uh, get some videos up for you guys to see suctioning and or placing of a wolf pharyngeal airway and that sort of thing. When patients have uh, secretions or vomits that cannot uh, be suctioned easily, remove the catheter uh, from the patient's mouth, log roll the patient on his or her side, and clear the mouth carefully with a gloved finger. Why do you not want to do that with your own finger? That's just wrong. Use a gloved finger. If the patient uh, produces a, a frothy uh, secretion such as uh, as uh, quickly as you can suction them, suction the airway for 15 seconds less in the infant and children, then ventilate this patient with a bag valve mask for two minutes and continue this alter, uh, alternating, alternating pattern until all the secretions have been cleared. Still need to make sure this patient is breathing, getting the air they need, so alternate. Suction, breathe for two minutes. Suction, breathe for two minutes. Use of the recovery position. This is a position that we help uh, to maintain a clear airway in an unconscious patient who does not have a, um, an injury, uh, especially a spinal injury, and is breathing on his or her own. You want to put them on their left side. And do the following things. They'll take the following steps. Roll the patient on his or her left side so that the head, shoulder, and torso move at the same uh, time without twisting. Place the patient's extended left arm and right hand under, under his or her cheek. Not appropriate for patients with suspected spinal injury. If somebody has a spinal injury, you don't want to put them in this position. The video is still not working. Supplemental oxygen. Always give patients uh, who are hypoxic or low on uh, oxygen, uh, uh, low on oxygen, oxygen. Some tissues and organs need a constant supply of oxygen to function normally. Never withhold oxygen from any patient who might benefit from it. Some of the oxygen equipment become familiar with how oxygen is stored. You have O2 cylinders contain compressed airs. Liquid oxygen becomes a more commonly used alternative. Safe considerations: handle your gas cylinders carefully. Make sure the uh, the correct pressure regulator is uh, firmly attached before a transport. A puncture hole in a tank can uh, can turn it into a deadly missile. Secure the tanks during transport. I have seen 102 tank when I was in ninth grade become a, this was not even in the EMS, this is back in ninth grade when I was in shop class. Uh, the 02 tank fell down, it knocked off the tip, and it sent a, uh, a O2 tank into the wall, actually busting out a, uh, con not a concrete, but a, was it a, um, a center block uh, hole in the wall of my school. So I've seen it happen, it's not fun, it's kind of scary. There's a pinning index system uh, prevents such mistakes as an oxygen regulator being accidentally connected to a carbon dioxide cylinder. That wouldn't be good, would it? What about an O2 tank being confused for an acetylene tank? That wouldn't be good either. Every cylinder has a specific uh, gas type, has given a pattern, has a given pattern and given number of pins. You have pressure regulators reduces the uh, cylinder's pressure to a useful therapeutic range. It's used between 40 and 70 psi. Finally, attach a uh, final attachment for delivering the gas is either a quick connect female fitting or, or a flow meter. Flow meter is usually uh, permanently attached to a pressurized regulator on emergency medical equipment. Pressure uh, compressed flow meter, and then, a, then there's the, another one, the uh, burden gauge flow meter. To place a, a oxygen cylinder in service, see uh, skills drill 9-7. Remember that you uh, must be completely familiar with equipment before attempting to use it on a patient. Hazard, hazards of supplemental oxygen. Oxygen does not burn or explode, but it does speed up in the con uh, combustion process. Oxygen is an oxidizer. It does not burn, but it will, in, it, it will help the burning process. A, sol a small spark, such as a glowing cigarette, can become a flame when you apply oxygen to it. Now, some hazards. Keep away from any source of heat or fire. Make sure the area is adequately ventilated. <coughs> Excuse me. 
But please, please, please never leave an oxygen cylinder standing unattended. Make sure it's on its side. Does everybody hear me? Never leave an oxygen cylinder on its uh, standing up. Make sure it's on its side so it cannot roll and fall and get hurt or break. Do you have oxygen delivery equipment? We're going to talk about non-rebreathing masks, bag mount devices, nasal cannulas, and a couple other pieces of equipment. Like I said, I'll have some videos up for you guys to look at um, in the next day or so, so you guys can really get a, a feel for this and have Chief Barber uh, or your new instructor to uh, check you off on your skills. This is a non-rebreathing mask. This is a preferred way to give oxygen to a pre-hospital setting patient, to patients uh, who are breathing adequately, which is suspect of having hypoxia. It's a combination of a mask and a reservoir bag. When the bag is fully inflated, the patient is getting 100%. It's getting right at 100% oxygen because it's also, see the little flap here? That flap is uh, designed so when you breathe in, it closes, and when you breathe out, it opens up to let the exhaled air out. So you're getting quite a bit of oxygen when you're breathing with a uh, non-breathing mask. You want to make sure this reservoir bag is full before placing the mask on the patient. And you want to adjust uh, the flow rate so the bag does not collapse when the patient inhales. This is usually between 10 and 15 liters. Uh, when oxygen therapy is discontinued, remove the mask. Most counties around here have a rule that if you have someone in a non-rebreathing mask, it has to be on 15. So just set it at 15. For your book and your test purposes, somebody who's on a non-rebreathing mask is usually between 10 and 15 liters per minute. Nasal cannula delivers oxygen through a small uh, tube-like prongs that fit into the nostrils. It can provide 24 to 44 uh, percent inspired oxygen when the flow meter is set between 1 and 6 liters per minute. What is the percent of oxygen that we breathe in every day? Take a deep breath in. Approximately what percentage of, of oxygen did we just breathe in? You might say 21 percent? You are correct. 21 percent. So if we're breathing in 21 percent, and more or less, um, you know, for every liter you, you increase that, you're increasing it by about 3 percent. So one, one liter, 24, two liters, 27, three liters, what, 30? That's going to be between 3 and 4 percent for each liter. It all depends on which book you read. Um, so just look think about it that way. When you breathe in, you're breathing in 21 percent of oxygen. When you anticipate long transport times, consider using humidification, which is allowing a, a little bit of a warm liquid into the uh, to the nasal cannula. The patient who breathes uh, through his or her mouth or nasal obstruction will not benefit from this. I always try to give high flow oxygen through a non rebreathing mask. Partial rebreather mask is very similar to a non rebreathing mask, except no one way valves are placed on between the mask and the reservoir. One way valves, when you breathe in, it closes so you can't get any air from the outside. So in the partial rebreather mask, those uh, one-way valves are no longer there. Consequently, the patient uh, rebreathes a small amount of in exhaled air. Advantage the patient, uh, advantage and advantageous to the patient who is hyperventilating. Uh, that is a non-rebreathing mask. That's not a picture of a venturi mask. A number of settings can vary uh, the percentage of oxygen while constant, constant uh, flow of, uh, is maintained. It's accomplished by a venturi principle. Medium flow device that delivers 24% to 40% of oxygen using long term management of psych psychological stable patients. You have your trick mask. I will have to get you guys a picture of a um, venturi mask. It's for some reason, I based the mess the page, uh, the page uh, the photo up. I'm sorry. Patients with uh, trachs, this is in their neck. Um, do not breathe through their, uh, their mouth or their nose. They actually breathe through the hole that's in their neck there. So you want to go, we have devices for that. Your trigonomy mask cover the, uh, the, uh, the hole and have a strap that goes around the neck. May not be available in an emergency setting. Improvise uh, when using a face mask instead, placing it over the, uh, the trach opening. Humidification, some EMS systems uh, provide humidified oxygen during extended transport. Many EMS systems do not use humidified oxygen in the pre-hospital setting. Some do, some don't. A lot of your BLS services, basic level services, will, but not ALS, which is 911. For certain uh, conditions such as crew, 
dry oxygen is not considered harmful in, in short-term use. Alrighty, I'm going to end there for right now. I'm getting ready to actually start my afternoon class. Uh, and I'll try to get some other things ready for you guys so you can see them later. We'll just pick up tomorrow with assistive and artificial ventilation. So you guys have a good afternoon, and I'll talk to you later.